hundreds of professors and faculty members at Ryerson University in Toronto. They have signed a letter demanding that the school change its name. So Egerton Ryerson was key to establishing the residential school system. And just a few days ago, uh, there were protesters that toppled his statue on campus. So, Tanya, I'm going to begin with you. Do you think the name of the school needs to be changed? Absolutely. As far as I know, I believe that Egerton Ryerson was a criminal. You know, the fact that he was one of the key architects that set up the Indian residential school system across this country should have been a red flag to absolutely everybody in the academic and university community when they decided to name a university after Ryerson. But of course, at the time, it wasn't because at the time, Canada was denying its true history and what has happened across the country in all of these schools. You know, there were more than 140 schools. There were more like 1,300 schools, day schools, residential schools where kids stayed overnight. And the last school closed in 1996. You know, I, I just came back from Kamloops and I was privileged to be asked to come out by the Tecumpla Teshwatma community and witness what was happening out there with the discovery of the 215 children. You know, it was so emotional. It was so heavy to realize that what the survivors had been saying for so, so long, which we all knew was that there were children buried at the school. And we know as descendants of residential school survivors, we know that at each of the schools, there are children that are lost and that are buried. And we have to find those children. And so loop that back to Ryerson, right? I get off the plane and on Sunday, I see the statue come toppling down. And how do I feel? I feel a sense of it's about time. It's time. I mean, we have to start changing the way this country presents itself, and also, too, how we support all Indigenous people and accept what's actually happened here. Thank you for sharing that, Tanya. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And I think it really brings home what everybody in Canada has been talking about for a few weeks now, uh, the tragedy, the complacency, um, and how we move forward, starting with no, no longer honoring these people who, as you have said, have perpetuated such horrible things. Mm -hmm. With respect to Ryerson, then, as uh, an institute of higher learning, uh, an academic institution that claims to be progressive and innovative, for me, I agree with you, I, th I, th I think it's a no-brainer. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I think that uh, Ryerson has shown leadership before, um, its law school is named after Lincoln Alexander. If you don't know who that is, I'm not going to tell you. You Google it and do the research. It'll be fun reading. Um, and also Ryerson's history. Um, if there's any school that's well positioned to be able to rebrand itself and rename itself, it would be Ryerson. Remember, this is a school that started off as not a university. It was um, an institute of technology. And um, when I was growing up, for example, um, yeah, there were people I talked to from certain elite academic backgrounds who laughed at Ryerson, right? Not a real university. Mm -hmm. It's, you yeah. know, an institute of technology. I remember that. Right? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. I'm glad it's not just me. And then yeah. Ryerson continued to do the research, continued to innovate, and then became a polytechnic university. And then only in the 90s, not that long ago, was able to gain official university status. That shows me that Ryerson is like the rogue right? The Ryerson is the ultimate underdog, not the person, but this institution. And so why would you want to associate this spirit of what this academic institution can be with someone with such a, a disgusting history? I think it's a great opportunity, yeah. and I think Ryerson can successfully rename, and in a really exciting way. Yeah, and it sounds like this conversation is being had by, by those that work there and attend the school there, and it sounds like they're deciding as a community that they don't want to valorize 
Ryerson any longer the person. And Ryerson the person will continue to go down in the history books as many things, including one of the architects of the residential schools. But it's just not something they want to continue to commemorate in the form of a name or a statue. It, it just seems like the sort of conversation that we've seen countless times, at least in the last five years with Robert E. Lee in the South. You know, he's Robert E. Lee's going to continue to be the general of the Army of the of Northern Virginia. They're just not naming a boulevard. They're changing the name. Right. And they're having the conversation to do it, you know, and community-wise coming up with alternative names. You know what? It's names and the power of names. We talk on the show all the time about the power of language and the power of names. And when you name an institution or a road or a building after somebody, it's because it represents who you are, it represents that person represents your values, who you valorize, who you think is a hero. And what's so powerful about what's happening, not just here with Ryerson, but the Langevin School in Alberta is having this huge dilemma as well. Uh, streets in Toronto, Jarvis, Dundas, everybody right now is reassessing and interrogating history. And what a powerful thing for someone like my daughter to witness, because we watched live on TV together the toppling of the Ryerson statue. And she was like, Mommy, what's going on? And we had already been speaking about residential schools. So when I connected who he was to the bigger picture of the discussion around residential schools, she kind of was like, well, that's a no brainer. Of course he should go yeah. if that's what he was a part of. And what a powerful thing for this young generation to know that knowledge evolves. When you know better, you do better. That knowledge is not immutable. That you must interrogate history. And you must be willing, as an adult, to say, we so screwed up, but we want to do better. And well, I was not raised like that, right? I was raised mm -hmm. by a European military father mm -hmm. who's like, I'm the boss, what I say goes, and you don't question. So what a gift, I think, I hope, I'm trying to give my daughter, mm -hmm. which is interrogate your history. Be willing and bold enough to ask, is that right? And if it's not, be even bolder to hopefully make a change. I think this is a uh, high time for a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. for you sure. know, it's really cool, um, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool, too, is that it's youth that are leading it, right? It's the students yeah. that go to Ryerson, and they're the ones that saying, no, it's enough. And it's also the faculty, you know? Um, everyone is putting their heads together. They're starting petitions. They're reaching out to everyone. And it, we got to do that. And it, it's the youth, right? They're saying, accept Canada's history. Accept it. And we don't have to keep the name because of history. It's we are accepting it and now we're moving on. We have to change in order for this country to change. Amen to that. Um